Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. Today's session, Part of the Basics, Selecting a Page Size with Steve Spence. Brought to you by Conde Systems. In this session, we'll look at one of the very basic elements in Corel Draw, selecting page size. When you open Corel Draw, you can open a new page just by clicking on this icon in the very upper left hand corner or you can go to page new and open a new page the default for a page in corel draw is always the letter size eight and a half by eleven we can change from the portrait which is the default to landscape with just a click of the button right here We'll go back and now we can talk about changing the size of the page. If you don't want to work with letter size or you need something else, as long as you haven't selected another object on the page, just take your pick tool and go to the box in the upper left hand corner. You'll see the word letter. If you click on that, you'll see a whole list of preset page sizes. In my particular program, I have letter, custom, envelope, A3, we'll talk about that in a minute, laser, because I run laser engravers, and tabloid, which is 11 by 17. We'll talk about those. Those are the ones I use most often. But there are others that you can pull from as well, or you can create your own and save them, just as I did with the laser page which in my case is 12 by 24 inches. So let's go back to letter and let's talk for just a minute about page sizes. The two that you're surely comfortable with is letter and legal. Legal is eight and a half by 14. Again, we can make it landscape just with a click of a mouse. We can also select other pages. In this case, we'll do tabloid, which I know is 11 by 17. Again, we can make it landscape with a click of a mouse. Let's select A3. A3 is a European and Asian paper size. It's not an American size, but we use it all the time with sublimation, so it's commonly used, but we don't recognize the millimeter sizes uh, typically in paper and so we might want to change that to inches so it becomes a little more understandable to us. So right in the uh, units box, which is almost to the center of the page, we can click on millimeters and change it to inches. And you'll notice that this particular paper size is 11.69, just short of 11.7 inches by 16 and just a smidgen over 16 and a half inches. When it comes to making custom page sizes, we can just go up and literally type in whatever we want. For instance, if we're going to do coffee cups, we might use one of the preset paper sizes, which is nine inches long and three and a half inches wide. That works for a coffee cup. Now, when we go back in and we use another page size, that size is gone and we'll have to re-enter it each time. Or we can do this. We can go to Tools, Options, Page Size, and here you can see we can type in whatever we want. In this case it's picked up from what I had typed in previously and now I can save that using the center icon and I can give it a name such as coffee cup. Click OK and OK again and now we can pick that up Oops, we can pick that up directly from our page so even though we go to letter and then we want to go back to coffee cup it's already there and it's saved for us to use over and over and over. Now one of the things that you'll want to keep in mind about working with pages is you can certainly just use one page and save it and put every job on a separate page and save it but sometimes it's a lot easier especially if you're going to do 20 coffee cups and they're all the same except 
maybe a name or maybe there's a change in the logo or something of that nature. They're all basically the same thing. They're for the same customer, but slightly different. And here's a way that you can save them all without just doing manual inserts. One of the problems with doing name inserts is that if you have to come back and do a cup later to do a replacement product or to correct an error, sometimes you have trouble matching exactly what the original was. If you save all the copies of all the jobs, then of course you can just pull that up and it's ready to go to the printer. So one of the ways that we can do that is by having multiple pages inside CorelDRAW and send them to the printer either in batches or one by, by one. To do that, we go down here to the bottom of the page and you see a page icon with a plus in it. When we do that, you can see that it has made a new page and the new page, interestingly enough, is letter size, not cup size. Now, let's go back and undo that and look at this again. Here we have our page, and up here we have two icons that we can click. The one that is currently selected says current page. Apply the page size to the current page only. The one next to it says that it applies the page size to all duplicate pages. So now we can go down and we can make a new page and it makes it the same size as the previous page. If we make another one, same thing. You can see we've added now five pages and they're all the same size. When we're printing to a Rico printer one of the things that we're restricted to is printing the same size page over and over. If you want to really confuse your printer, try sending multiple sized pages. Um, that's just a disaster. So inside each file, keep your pages the same size. Okay, that's pretty much an introduction to page size and how to select it in CorelDRAW. It's simple as long as you know what you're looking for and I hope this really helps. So, for now, good luck!